He's a Network, Networks Tournament of Champions winner, which is pretty darn awesome. He's a NOLACON black badge holder. Um, and he's uh, taken a step back from CTF competition to focus on lifting others up and creating a more diverse and inclusive community, which is fantastic. He's got a bunch of certifications, including GCIA, GCIH, GXPN, and OSCP. Derek is an incredible guy. I'm, I've, I've worked with him for years. He's spoken at many of the Hackfest events that we've had. Um, I love to watch him teach, and I'm super excited about the presentation. So please join me in welcoming Derek Rook. Derek, yay! Thank you so much, Ed. I always, I, I always think you overdo it when you introduce me, but I, I appreciate it every single time. Just telling time. people how it is. Just tell them how it is. <laughs> So uh, I obviously am incredibly honored to be here. Uh, very recently, I was involved in a 24-hour stream to uh, raise money for a high school uh, set of high school kids in Belize that were um, affected by the drop in travel to their island. And one of the overarching themes that came out of that was that uh, talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity isn't. And that's why I'm so excited to be a part of this event, uh, this free summit that SANS is putting on for people. It's not even just free, but it's, it's virtual. So everybody from around the world can participate and learn. And uh, this kind of, um, you know, getting information out there, even to people who aren't necessarily uh, funded uh, is, is very important to me. So I'm, I'm happy that you're here and I'm happy to be a part of this. Another thing, these kinds of events are kind of blessings and curses, right? Uh, we have two amazing tracks, and a lot of times it's very difficult to decide which track you want to go to. And even more so for the speakers when you go up against another, another talk that you really want to go see, and there's no way you can because you have to be on stage. So I'm excited uh, and honored to be part of this uh, kind of plenary session uh, for both tracks. So there's one slide, and really I didn't want to do any slides, but uh, I have some links that I want to distribute. So you can either take a screenshot or you can type that out yourself. Or if you're in the Slack channel, which I encourage you to be, uh, I put it in there as well. So you can just click it instead of having to type it out. But it's got some links to some things that I'll be talking about a little bit later. But otherwise, it's kind of story time. And earlier, you heard uh, Ed Scotus, the, the legendary Ed Scotus, talk about uh, CTFs and, and a little bit about building CTFs, which of course, you know, Counterhack Challenges is, are, are leaders in that industry, uh, but also how to prepare for CTFs and study for CTFs. But I wanted to kind of tell my own story through CTFs and, and how CTFs uh, not only made me a better security professional, but launched my career and introduced me to people who I now consider extremely close friends and just some of the lessons learned that I've, that I've taken away from these things. So if you'll indulge me for the next 15 to 20 minutes uh, and maybe you can learn some lessons that took me many years to learn, I think that's a pretty good return on investment. And then afterwards I'll distribute a couple like quick hard facts and, and a few links and, and uh, I'll let you all go to lunch depending on, you know, which time zone you're in. So, Let's go back to my very first NetWars. It's 2015 and OFSEC for me at the time was just a hobby. I, in fact, had just become a security engineer. Previous to that, I was a systems engineer uh, and systems admin doing, you know, dabbling in security, configuring firewalls and IPSs and whatnot, but not an official security person. And my company wanted to send me to SANS. This is not my first SANS class, uh, but it was my first SANS class as a security person. And of course, I wanted to take 560. Well, my company said, oh, that's all well and good, but you're not a pen tester. So we want you to take incident handling 504. And at the time I was disappointed. And the, the ironic part of this is that I enjoyed that class so much that that's now the class I teach. And I don't know that I would ever teach any other class. I love teaching 504 because it gives, uh, it gives an amazing spectrum of, of insight across both attacking and defending. And what's great about that is, you know, as a defender, you need to know how the attacks work. And what I try and tell my team now as an offensive security leader is that you need to understand how the defenses work. You can't just go in and drop a elite hack and then bounce, right? You need to help. You need to work with how it's detected. You need to help remediate and mitigate. So I love 504. So I'm taking 504. I have very little introduction into OFSEC. It, I call it a hobby, but really it was a, it was a dabbling. I was at best what would be considered a script kitty at the time. 
And I'm taking it from the, the venerable John Strand, who is now, a, a, I consider him a close friend and mentor. Uh, I'm lucky to consider him that, but I'm taking his class and I decide to go to NetWars. And since I have a Linux background, I kind of jump in and, and kind of crush level one, which is just, at, at the time it was NetWars 4. So um, it was like Linux admin basically. And I get into level two, struggle a little bit, get into level three and I hit a wall. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with hacking. I don't have a lot of experience with Metasploit. Um, Jeff McJunkin, who used to work for Counterhack Gaming, put a, an Android challenge in, which was literally a brick wall for me. And I kind of wasted the next half of the night just beating my head against a challenge. And I started to get frustrated. I took a step away. One of the great things about NetWars is they've got you know a bar in the back and they've got snacks and music, so you can kind of step away and let your brain reset. And what I decided is right now you're under the clock and you're very stressed, but I have some information available to me. I have the questions and I have, uh, you know, some subjects. So I'm going to save off the questions I have access to, and I'm going to try my best to finish a couple more questions, but I'm going to save off the questions that I have access to. And, and after net wars, I'm going to uh, study up. And I saved off those questions. I started teaching myself things. I ran into, um, I ran into some volatility questions. I'd never done memory forensics, so I started reading the manual pages for volatility. Uh, that Android question, I downloaded and installed the, the Android Dev Toolkit and the, uh, the Android emulator and started working on payloads and seeing why they weren't working on the, the live target. And next thing I know, it's, it's four in the morning. And for those of you who have done a SANS class in the past, that makes for a really rough day of class the next day. But here's something interesting that happened to me is the next day, and uh, you know, I kind of kicked myself at the time, but it was an, it was an interesting uh, experience. The very next day we cover volatility in class. And so there was a person behind me that was having some difficulties. And so I turned around and started helping them with volatility because I literally just taught myself volatility the night before. Now I'm not an expert in memory forensics. I'm not an expert in volatility, but I learned it enough. I read the manual pages and I knew kind of how the program worked. And the TA walked by and he's like, oh, do you do forensics? And I was like, no, I did net wars. And that was kind of my first takeaway, like my first lessons learned in CTFing, uh, in real CTFs, is that uh, these things, as, as Ed mentioned in his talk before, these subjects that you're studying are real world. Now, some CTF challenges are more contrived than others, you know, and some of them are just puzzles for puzzle's sake, as, as Ed pointed out. One of the things I love about NetWars is it is not like that. It is very real, very pretty real world. Um, but I had taught myself a skill and I learned that CTFs are, are a gateway to learn skills on live environments uh, where I don't have to come up with the problem to solve, right? And one of the hardest parts about learning skills is that you have to come up with the problems to solve to be able to solve it with the skill you want to learn. And you may not have the insight to do that. That's why you want to learn the skill, right? So CTFs taught me a skill and uh, it taught me a lot more skills. Uh, I'd never worked with Android before and there were a lot of other things, but that one instance that helping somebody else with a skill that I had just learned really kind of drove that home for me. And I didn't get much further in level three in NetWars. I got a little further. Uh, it was the second time that NetWars 4 had been run. So there was a veterans scoreboard and a, and a introductory, like a first timer scoreboard. And I did well enough to get second place in the newcomers. And with second place, if you've done NetWars before, like top five or depending on the event, top 10, uh, people get invited to the end of the year tournament of champions. And I didn't go. I didn't go because I was nervous. I was scared. Uh, you know, second place is pretty good, but it was second place in the newcomers, right? Like the veterans crushed me and, and all of that stuff. So I, I didn't feel that I was ready or worthy to go to NetWars. So I didn't. Uh, I, I celebrated, <laughs> celebrated quite a bit, actually. Uh, this was in Vegas, so quite a bit of celebration afterwards of the second place. A coworker of mine was there with me, and he got, I think, fifth or sixth. So we were pretty stoked on that. Uh, and we, we had a good time and, and really just enjoyed the win. Um, but that wasn't the end of it. So 2016, the next year, uh, I was still not an offsec. I was still... Um, 
I was still a security engineer. I think I had, it was a senior security engineer by that point, but I was still just a security engineer. Offsec still a hobby. By this point, I had gotten my OSCP. Uh, so I had gotten a little more formal training in offensive security. I finished 504, which obviously has some offensive uh, components to it. Uh, but uh, I go to Hackfest, and this was my first time speaking for SAN. So it was a very special event for me in multiple, multiple ways. I was on a panel about offense informing defense and vice versa, which was fun. And I was taking the uh, web application pen testing course. So I, it was kind of honing my offensive skills at that point. And I was very excited. Hackfest events, if you, if you haven't noticed, uh, this is a Hackfest event and also a cyber range event, but they tend to have an overabundance of cyber ranges available to you. So instead of the normal two nights of net wars, it's like three nights of net wars and a night of cyber city. And, and it's kind of like a hacker's playground. So I was very excited to kind of jump into another cyber range. Well, I get into it and I notice they're the same questions. And I ask about that and they, very bluntly tell me, and, and they're right to, I didn't think of this at, at first, but you know, networks usually get like six hours of access to it. And unless you're extremely good, going from cold start to finish is not going to happen in six hours. So you can just put in the answers to the questions you've already solved and gain access to new content and, and learn new skills, which is great. The problem was I didn't take any notes the first time. I was so focused on just burning through as many questions as fast as possible that I didn't have any sort of notes at all. And that meant that I had to redo them. Now, was it quick to redo them? Of course. I remembered some stuff, other things I didn't remember. So I struggled. I spent, you know, an entire couple hours on a, on a thing that I had already solved previously because I just didn't remember. And that's kind of my second takeaway is and this is something I tell my, my group a lot, is if you're moving too fast to take notes, you're moving too fast. Okay, you have to document things. You have to take good notes. And I say that this is a takeaway. I say this is a lesson learned, but we'll see a little bit later in the story that uh, I didn't learn it as well as I should have. But so I, I kind of struggle bust through. I get further than I had before. I get into stage four about midway through uh, stage four. And I made some really good friends at Hackfest. Another great thing about Hackfest, and this isn't just a just shilling for SANS events, but I, the reason I'm an instructor is because I loved the SANS community so much. So this is just near and dear to my heart, is there's a lot of social activity at Hackfest. There's a, you know, a field trip and there's some fun and games and there's a lot of kind of community building as part of the summit and the, the classes themselves. So I met a lot of really good friends, which helped me uh, in a few months because I did well enough in that Hackfest to get invited to Tournament of Champions. And I, I was fortunate enough to have an employer that sent me to Tournament of Champions. I wasn't taking a class. They didn't, you know, shell out for the full class, but they were willing to pay my travel to show up for a couple of days to do Tournament of Champions because they were happy that they had an employee. I'm sorry, there's a street sweeper outside. I hope that's not really distracting. Um, but they were excited that I, they had an employee that qualified. So they sent me and I went and it, it, this time was a little bit different. I had been to DC several times for various conferences, but I had never actually seen the city. In fact, it was an ongoing joke with my wife and I that I kept going to DC for a few days or, or a week or something and really just see the inside of a convention center or a hotel room. So I'm going for net wars. I'm not doing anything during the day have all day to, to just kind of goof off. So I brought my wife. We were going to go street, street seeing and uh, you know, see the sites and check out the National Mall and check out the Smithsonian's and whatnot and just kind of have a good couple of days while I hacked at night. It was going to be fun. At the time, I was going solo. Uh, I didn't have any intention. I had not played with a team before. Uh, teams were relatively new to networks at the time. So I was planning on going solo. And when I showed up, we were all sitting down to, to kind of compete and get set up and get our laptops set up and, you know, taking pictures of our, our cool like networks tournament champion shirts and things like that. Um, and I ran into the people that I had met at Hackfest before. And they said, hey, we got a group of three. Do you want to play with us? And I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like we're not any good. We just want to play together. And I was like, no, that's, that sounds great. And um, that team 
uh, are, I'm still very good friends with all of them today. And, and in fact, I call them, I've known them for a few years now. We see each other really only at conferences. We're spread across all over the US, uh, but I consider them very close friends. And that's another, not really a, a key takeaway of, of, uh, of you know, participating in CTFs, but frankly, it should be, is, is the, network, the networking that you can do and the professional contacts, but not just the professional contacts, the personal contacts you can make have been, have been extraordinary. And I, I cherish that friendship to date. But so we meet up with these friends. The first night, we just get decimated. And in fact, the picture, if you were at Ed's talk earlier, the picture of the trophy holders uh, included Nick Ippolito, which uh, was, the, was the person on the team that kind of was destroying us on night one. Towards the end of it, we made a decision that was very similar to my decision on the first time I took Net Wars, which was, we're not doing very well. Let's take a second. Let's start doing packet captures. Let's collect logs. Let's, um, you know, let's download some config files. And that way tomorrow we can kind of spend a couple hours reviewing those and try and get set up for the next night. So night one goes off, uh, we're, we're not feeling great. Uh, we're in second place, but we're kind of a distant second. And so the next day I, I tell my wife, I say, all right, well, we have a lunch. Tournament of Champions has a lunch uh, or had a lunch back then. I said, I'm going to have a lunch. I'm going to meet with my team for a couple hours after the lunch, and then you and I can go check out a couple Smithsonian's uh, museums. So a couple hours go by, I text her, I say, we're still working. A couple hours go by, I text her, I say, we're still working. Six hours later, it's time for Net Wars, and we haven't gotten up from where we were. We spent that entire afternoon into the evening reviewing logs, reviewing our um, uh, packet captures, reviewing the config files and getting set up and finding vulnerabilities and looking at the attacks that were launched against us and analyzing those. And we were able to, with that level of preparation, we were actually able to come back from behind and win. And in fact, it was so close uh, that you know, uh, Tournament of Champions are all net wars. They turn off the scoreboard for the last like 20 minutes or 10 minutes, 30 minutes. It's been a while since I've gotten to compete, but they turn off the scoreboard. And so for that entire time, we didn't know who was winning or who won. And we didn't know that we had won until they announced second place. And it was, it was amazing. It was, it was a great feeling. Uh, you know, my team and I went out and partied afterwards, but the big takeaway that I learned from that is, is twofold. One is you got to block out the time. If you're playing to win, if you're looking to compete, and I'm not saying you always should, and we'll get to playing for fun in a, in a, in a minute, but if you're playing to win, you, you're devoting that time. You have to devote that entire time because even if it's a limited availability CTF, so it's only open from hour to hour, there's a lot of prep and studying that you can do during the off hour. So if, it, if there's malware analysis uh, components to it or forensics or binary exploitation components to it, save off, those, save off those binaries and do the analysis outside of time so that you can spend the, um, the time that the CTF is open on the dynamic things that you have to actually have access to to, to, to analyze. So time management is another thing. Pull down stuff before the end. Pull down things that you can analyze after hours. And that is huge. That gives you a huge leg up. So instead of only having six hours to compete, you actually have 12 hours or 15 hours or 18 hours or however long you, you spend on that. Okay, so that's the other big takeaway. Block out the time and be good with your time management. Um, having somebody, not even as a like dedicated PM, but having somebody kind of calling out time and calling out uh, strategies are very helpful. Coordinating uh, is extremely helpful. So that was in, uh, that was, so Tournament of Champions happens in November. And so that was November of 2016. And during Cyber Defense Initiative, which is the, the event that hosts Tournament of Champions, usually kicks off the Holiday Hack Challenge, which I think you've heard a little bit about uh, throughout this event. And if you haven't, then uh, you should. And all, you know, I will, uh, uh, we have links to that in the, in the resources that I have up. Uh, but Holiday Hack Challenge was going on and I was very excited about it because I was just coming off of the CTF high and I, you know, I, I wanted to do more. And so, I start participating in, in Holiday Hack Challenge. Now, it's a lot bigger. It's always on. Uh, and the 
competition itself is multiple weeks before they close the submissions for the write-ups. But an interesting thing about Holiday Hack Challenge is there's, there's no score per se. Uh, there's objectives and there are flags, but the way that you compete isn't by just submitting flags and getting a score, it's through your write-ups and your write-ups are judged. And so in my competitive mode, I just burned through the CTF as fast as possible. And that's not to say I finished it quickly. In fact, I ran into a few challenges where I actually read an entire book. I read the entire Web Application Hacker's Handbook uh, during that uh, holiday hack challenge because there was a SQL problem that I just was beating my head against. Here's a side lesson just in, in general offensive security, not even for CTFs, but a vulnerability, it, an exploit, like a traditional exploit isn't always the answer. I was trying to break SQL injection controls to be able to SQL inject when in reality there was a misconfiguration that you could abuse. So I read the entire Web Application hand Hacker's Handbook and it didn't help me in that specific sense. It's helped me immeasurably. It's a great book. Uh, but it, you know, given the extended time, I was able to do that. But when I finished, I went to go do my write-up and I was like, you know what would be fun is some video write-up. So instead of just like typing it all out, I actually record videos of, of kind of walkthroughs of the challenges. And I recorded my first video and I realized I had no idea uh, how to solve that. And that's not to say that I didn't solve it and I didn't understand a little bit about what was going on. But if you ever wonder if you know a thing or you want to learn something very well, you want to learn it very deeply, try and explain it. Uh, and you will quickly learn that you're really just scratching the surface of understanding that thing. Uh, excuse me. And so what I ended up doing is just, I reran the entire CTF. Uh, it wasn't just a spot here and there so I could record some walkthroughs. It was, I literally had to run through the entire thing. Now I was taking notes the entire time. I was recording the commands that I did and I was recording the payloads that I used to, to complete each challenge. But that wasn't enough for me to really be able to reconstruct and fully understand why things were happening. And this is another thing that I tell my, my team and this is kind of the takeaway. When you're there for learning, and I was competing, I was trying to, you know, have the best write-up possible, uh, but really Holiday Hack is about learning. And so when you're learning, when you're doing a CTF for learning, slow down. In fact, uh, way after this, uh, in fact, just a year or so ago, a year or two ago, I was doing the, the Google CTF, which if you haven't done the Google CTF, it's online, it's free, and it's brutal. Uh, even Even... Like even if you're a mid-level, advanced-level pen tester, uh, red teamer, it's 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 brutal. And I just decided. I said, okay, here's two web challenges. I wanted to work on web that time. I was like, here's two web challenges. I'm just going to work on these. And and I did for the entire two days or three days or whatever the Google CTF was going for. I just beat my head against those two things, over and over and over again. And uh, it, it, was, it was excruciating. It was frustrating. Uh, Ed said, don't get frustrated, but I'm here to tell you, you probably will. And it's, and it's something to strive to very like, like Zen to just not get frustrated, but you will just beating your head against a thing. Um, but stick with it and try different things and read articles. Take the time to read articles because again, you're not competing. You're not there to burn through it. You're there to learn. So slow down and take your time. And if you do solve a thing, I want you to ask a different question. So usually there's like a what and a how, like what did you do and how did you do it? But you need to understand the why. If you can't understand the why the thing happened or why that vulnerability was there, then I don't think you fully understand the hack, right? And something I tell my team, and you know, when you're on a pen test or when you're on a red team engagement or whatever, you can't always take the time necessary to learn. You're, you're oftentimes on a crunch. Uh, but I tell my team, if you don't understand the why of the thing, you didn't do a hack, you just got lucky. And that's fine sometimes, but if you're there to learn, that's not okay. You need to know the why, okay? So you need to get that deeper understanding. So slow down, take better notes. And I said 
my second net wars, I learned to take notes and I said only kind of, and that's because this challenge really told me that I wasn't taking good enough notes. I wasn't documenting well enough. I was just kind of doing the bare minimum so I could, I guess, build a script to just replay the same things I did over, but not enough to be able to explain and to really dig into the meat of what was going on. So that is kind of the, the starter journey into CTFs for me. Um, that, that really, like those two, um, that, that, those two NetWars experiences into the Tournament of Champions, into Holiday Hack, was this kind of containerized experience that really taught me a lot. And at no point in that journey was I a professional hacker, was I in offensive security. In fact, I was very new to even having security in my title. But I learned so much through those CTF experiences that not long after that, um, not long after the 2016 uh, Tournament of Champions, I actually got my offer to lead a pen test team. And some people might say, oh, well, you don't have enough experience to lead a pen test team. And that's maybe true. It depends on your, your viewpoints. But I learned uh, so much through my non-security career and my non-offensive security career. And then I learned so much through CTFing and uh, making videos and things like that, that I've, I've led a fairly successful team, I think. Um, since then, uh, I'm now a principal offensive security engineer. So I actually just got promoted. Um, depending on your career track, you may not think it's a promotion, but I actually just got promoted out of being a senior manager. So I'm back to an individual contributor and being technical again. Uh, but I'm a principal offensive security engineer. I uh, have I won a second tournament of champions with my team. It wasn't just me. In, in fact, it was, frankly, my team is amazing and I was lucky to have them. It was, it was truly a team experience. Um, but we won a second tournament of champions the following year. I became a SANS instructor. I got a black badge at NOLACON and um, I've, I've joined a few groups and I'll talk about the impact that groups have had in just a minute. Uh, I, those groups have got me into bug bounties that have you know paid not a considerable amount of money, but a decent amount of money and kind of gave me some more experience in real world hacking. Uh, and they just continue to teach me. I don't really compete anymore. Uh, I, I kind of got my... You know, I, I got my kicks in and, and, and I was very excited to get a black badge as the only black badge I have. And uh, I would like to have more, but really I just have so much more fun just kind of learning through CTFs uh, that I don't really put that time in anymore. So uh, I talked a lot about CTFs and what good they were for me and tried to highlight some some takeaways that I got from them. But how do you even find these CTFs, right? Uh, Ed pointed out some resources earlier, and I'm just going to kind of reemphasize them. The big one is ctftime.org, and this the link to that is in the resources uh, that I've linked in my uh, in the Slack channel, as well as it's on the the slide there. Uh, ctftime.org is basically an online. Um, uh, resource that just has every online uh, free and sometimes not free CTF. Sometimes they're closed, sometimes they're region restricted, but they're online uh, and, and when they're going to happen and who they're available to. Uh, the other big resource uh, is we keep saying is Holiday Hack Challenge. And I have that up there separate for a reason. Holiday Hack Challenge exists mm -hmm. from Cyber Defense Initiative, which is the end of November through, uh, or I'm sorry, early December through uh, mid-December, uh, through like late December, early January, depending on what their timeline is. But once that competition's done, all of the Holiday Hack Challenges are up forever. Okay, so you can go to Holiday Hack Challenge, which again, the link is in the resources, and um, you can go there and participate in the older, uh, the older challenges, which are great for learning. And Ed Scotus just... Uh, released earlier in his talk. If you weren't there for it, I, I believe it's archived on YouTube or soon will be, uh, but he just released the H2 matrix, which is a, a kind of descendant uh, inspired by the C2 matrix, but it actually has all of the different skills you need to go through the previous holiday hack challenges and tells you which holiday hack challenge it's in and which uh, exercise it's in. So if you want to practice a certain skill, you can go directly to that. So it's a f fantastic resource. It is a CTF, but then it's also kind of a, a, a war game, so to speak. Uh, 
There are not CTFs you can do. So in between CTFs, you can go to things like um, Over the Wire or VulnHub or Hack the Box and participate in these CTF-like challenges that aren't necessarily competitions, but can, can hone your skills and, and practice on live environments that you don't have to build yourself. They're extremely useful. And so a lot of them are smaller than the older Holiday Hack Challenges or the Holiday Hack Challenges. But if you go through all the Holiday Hack Challenges, those are some other great environments to go through that are free freely available. Some of them like Hack the Box has a paid subscription that you can apply to, but you can get the live boxes and, and quite a bit of content for free. Now you you know where to get um, you know where to get CTFs or where to participate in CTFs, but I keep talking about how much more fun it is to hack together and how, uh, you know, the, the friends I've made along the way uh, have really influenced my path. And so how do we find that? I have some links and it's not an exhaustive set but I have some links on the uh, CTF resources page that link out to a few groups. Uh, Ed Scotus called out over uh, open to all. That is a group that I've been in um, uh, that I've been involved with for a few years. I don't actively CTF with them very often, but the community that they've built is phenomenal. They are literally open to all. There is no skill requirement. There is no, um, uh, region requirement. We have members from all over the world. We have members of all uh, identities and subcultures and races, and it, and it just truly is a phenomenal uh, group to, to, to participate with. They have subgroups for bug bounties. They have subgroups for capture the flags. They have subgroups for pen testing and red teaming and web exploitation and binary exploitation. Um, uh, war games groups that just go to like Ponable uh, sites and learn through that or go to things like Over the Wire and, and kind of learn together. Uh, and they do meetups at different conferences. So we have a big meetup at DEF CON, which is super fun to kind of meet everybody in person and hang out together. Uh, additionally, for qualifier events, they will do qualifier events. And if it culminates in an in-person finals, they will find out who is in that area or who's able to get to that area. And we actually have members participate in live hacking events as well. So I cannot say enough about uh, uh, open to all. I saw a question in uh, qu the question and answers about how can someone join this group. The link to that is in the CTF resources that's on my slide. So there is a link to where to go to sign up for that group. Some other groups that I am familiar with that I've had uh, participation with is uh, uh, BreakSec. Uh, if you're familiar with Brian Break, he has a podcast on their Slack. They also have a CTF group. Uh, so you can join them. The Hack the Box Discord has a lot of people that participate in CTFs. And then John Hammond has a CTF group as well. There are, if you're part of an un underrepresented group, uh, there are a lot of very niche small groups that cater to, you know, non-binary or femme presenting or, uh, you know, underrepresented minorities that uh, I don't have any particular experience with them. And a lot of them like to stay smaller exposure. So I don't want to call them out specifically, but if you are a member of one of them or run one of those groups and want them included in the CTF resources, please reach out to me and I'm happy to add that link. Uh, but if you're part of one of those groups, you can do some Googling, you can go onto Twitter and find uh, groups that cater to your specific uh, subgroup and, and make sure that there's a safe place uh, for you to learn and grow. So we're coming up about five minutes left. Um, I want to call out, uh, I want to kind of recap the takeaways. So the, the takeaways here is that, you know, CTF equals a learning opportunity. So no matter if you're there to compete or you're there just to learn, you're still growing your skills and you should be looking at it that way. There's, there's, the, in fact, the first time I ever uh, blew up a Jenkins server was, uh, I can't remember if it was Cyber City or NetWars. Uh, I think it was Cyber City. I think it was Cyber City. Uh, but it, a lot of people, a lot of web hackers, and I, I do web exploitation as my primary niche. A lot of web hackers say that WordPress is their favorite shell. Uh, but I disagree. I think Jenkins is my favorite shell because it's a distributed shell. Uh, and the first time I ever did that was at a CTF event. And I learned that and I've used it over and over and over again in my day job. So they're learning opportunities. Even though they're not professional things that you do, even though, uh, you know, it's not, you're not getting paid for it, or maybe you are getting paid for it, but even though it's not your day job, you need to take documentation, you need to take notes, you need to understand what you're doing, uh, especially in, in larger ranges like uh, 
like net wars, because sometimes you'll run across something earlier in a level and you'll have to go back to it later in the level. And if you're not taking those notes and you're not keeping track of what you've done and what you've seen, you might miss that and you'll lose time. So take notes. And it's also great practice for engagements. You know, you want to practice like you work and you want to work like you practice, right? So, so get in that habit. Um, when I interview people, we have a CTF like, um, uh, we have a CTF like exercise in our interview process and the candidates that are taking notes as they go, get a huge leg up when we actually go back and start talking about candidates. We're like this person, uh, you know, took notes and, and they get, they get major kudos. There's no points in our, in our interview process, but they get major points for that. If you're competing block out time. Okay. Uh, don't bring your spouse. You're not going to have time to visit with them. Actually, it was great for my spouse. She got to walk all over DC. She enjoyed the trip, but it wasn't the trip that we expected it to be. Uh, so just know going into it, if you're competing, that's what you're going to be doing during that time. And then the final takeaway that I've already mentioned is if you're learning, slow down and take time and understand the why of something. Okay. And I say the final takeaway that I've already mentioned, because there's a kind of prescript to the story. So the story that I told was started in 2015. I was a security engineer. It was my first net wars and it was my second SANS class, but I didn't mention my first SANS class. My first SANS class I took when I was a systems engineer. I had a, a company that was, that was forward thinking enough that knew that training their systems engineers and security was a good thing. And they sent me to Security 503. And I was privileged to be able to take uh, the intrusion analysis course from the legendary Mike Poor and uh, amazing instructor and amazing person and friend at this point. And he talked a lot about net wars and I didn't participate. I was scared. Uh, like literally I was intimidated and I was scared because to me, there were professional elite hacks wars that were, you know, hacking the planet and there was a scoreboard and I was imagining like spotlights and announcers and all this, you know, r ridiculous stuff, but I was building it up in my head because I didn't think that I was good enough. And then even translated into the first time I got invited to TOC, I didn't go because I didn't think I was good enough. So the big takeaway, the, the final takeaway, and I think the most important is that you have to participate. And I cannot stress enough how inclusive and how encouraging the CTF community is and the, the hacking community and the offensive security and the InfoSec community is uh, if you find the right group. And so if you can't find the right group, I, I spend a lot of my time trying to help people find the groups, find the resources, find the uh, competitions to participate in. So reach out to me if you're having trouble, but please find the group and please, please, please participate. Uh, and it will, I mean, just a couple years after starting CTFing, it really just launched my career and it was phenomenal and it's been a wild ride ever since. So we're like right up on time. So I don't know if we have time for questions, but I will be in the... Slack channel. Absolutely. So Derek, can you hear me? Yes. That was wonderful. Really appreciate it. We, I'll go over just a couple quick questions and we're going to take a break so people can have lunch or a snack. Uh, you got the same question several times with different phrasing and you mentioned taking notes. I mentioned taking notes. What do you use to document a penetration test or, or your own learning? And uh, uh, so uh, Corey asked that, um, Roger asked that, Anonymous uh, had mentioned it, um, and especially something Corey added this that's compatible across multiple operating systems. Yeah, so um, I mean, if you ask like n people, you're going to get n plus ten responses yep. to this. I think uh, really, it's whatever works for you. A lot of people love Keep Note. It's not really something I like doing. Uh, Cherry Tree is pretty great. It works pretty well uh, across operating systems, though it can kind of get finicky sometimes. Like I, I've had some trouble in the past, intermittent trouble with the Mac client, uh, but really it's whatever works. I mean, a lot of times I just use VI because that's what it's available to me, but set up, figure out what works for you. Um, I like to set up a directory structure inside of my, my engagement directory. And I just keep notes that way. I have different hosts are each their own, uh, are each their own uh, directory and I keep notes for those hosts inside of that, or I set up the same structure inside a cherry tree or notepad plus plus or whatever. Sure. There's also one note, right? Which has a web one note. Yeah. Thing, and Evernote. There's a whole bunch of different note taking things. Um, yeah. I don't think you need to get super fancy on the notes, um, but someplace you can consistently store them access them for multiple operating systems and search search is so I, I see somebody mentioned you could probably just record yourself and rewatch I think when you're doing exercises I think that's a great idea engagement 
I don't know how much your clients would appreciate that, but uh, some of it could be great. Like showing them a video of the, of the process could really be impactful. So it really depends. But for, for exercises, absolutely, you can record yourself. Yep. Maggie May asks, how can we reach out to you? How can they find uh, you on Twitter? And yeah, so <laughs> my, my last name is super popular uh, for some reason. So my Twitter handle is a little weird. It's underscore R00K underscore. Uh, on Twitter. And that's my primary, that's where I'm most active. Um, it, Jeff's already on it, posting it on the, uh, uh, yep. the Slack link there. But if you're not on Slack, I, I just said it, you can find me on Twitter. Very cool. Hey, Derek, thank you so much for this. Uh, you'll hang out in the, the chat. Uh, Absolutely. Want to access it, it's hallway-derek-rook. Thank you for a great presentation. Insightful, fun, from the heart. I, I loved it. I'm sure everybody else did too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. It's, it's truly, truly my pleasure.